Well, joining me now to talk more about this and the controversy that it's generated is Marcy Donovsky, Executive Director at the Center for Genetics and Society, and Jeffrey Karp of Harvard University's Stem Cell Institute and Brigham and Women's Hospital. Thanks to both of you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Well, so let me start with you. Researchers this week announced this new method. We've just had that report on that uh, for creating stem cells. What are the controversies surrounding this method? Is that a question for me? Yes, Marcy, it is. Yes. Uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, the controversies are both ethical and in, uh, controversies about social justice. As uh, you, you, one of your speakers said, there's real concern that this technology will be used to, by unscrupulous people to try to produce cloned babies, cloned human beings. And the reassurances of the researchers that this cannot be done is unfortunately flimsy. Um, it seems that the first most difficult step has been done. So we need to have a global agreement in place that human reproductive cloning is prohibited. Many countries have done that, but unfortunately the United States has not yet done that at a federal level, and that needs to happen along with global agreements right away. Then we also need to be very careful that we don't exaggerate the certainty or the imminence of medical treatments based right. on this method. Okay, Jeffrey Kopp, is that where we're heading uh, for cloned babies? Uh, and are controls actually going to uh, prevent this from happening, or are there going to be rogue scientists who are going to create cloned babies no matter what the law is? Right. I, I don't think there's a single scientist, at least I don't, know, I don't know of any scientists out there who would be interested in pursuing reproductive cloning. I think that um, the, 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 the very scientists who actually uh, published this report have been trying to clone a monkey for 10 years and they have not been successful. And they've also admitted that the technique that they've developed um, could not be used to clone a baby. So I think this is still a very far um, fetched idea. But I think that the potential of therapeutic cloning is enormous. There's so many diseases out there that current medicines are not being able to, to treat. Um, Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, diabetes, and I think that stem cell technology has the potential to treat many of these diseases, and with this new approach, I think that we bring these technologies closer uh, to the clinic. Marcy, does that address the concern that babies will be cloned, the fact that it can't be done right now? Well, unfortunately, it isn't a reassurance completely, and I don't think that the researchers in Oregon want to do this at all. And uh, Jeff is right in saying that respectable scientists don't want to. But as we saw the last time cloning was in the headline, there are plenty of wealthy, egomaniacal people, and there are plenty of unscrupulous IVF doctors willing to take their money. And we really need tough sanctions to make sure that that doesn't happen, to minimize that, the chance that that would happen, and to punish people who try it if it does happen. That would be a reassurance. And that would be a reason to continue to do this kind of stem cell research. It's one kind among a number of kinds of stem cell research. Uh, I think it's really important, again, not to exaggerate cures, because I think that can be really cruel to patients and their families to get their hopes up. There's still a long way to go before this and most of the other kinds of stem cell research bear fruit. Right. Jeffrey Cobb, the question is, you know, why are human embryos like this being cloned? Because scientists already have the ability to create stem cells, uh, the so-called iPS cells. I mean, you can take an adult cell um, and, and reconfigure the genes and you create a stem cell that way. Why do you need human embryos? Right. So we've seen um, Yamanaka in Japan um, develop this t technique that you're referring to about six, seven years ago and recently won the Nobel Prize. And it's an incredibly promising technique. Although what we've seen with some of the methods used for reprogramming, this can lead to genetic or epigenetic abnormalities in the cells. And so we still don't really know if these cells will indeed be able to be, to be applied therapeutically. The hope is there. Um, but I think that, you know, with another approach, with the therapeutic cloning, this really increases the chances. And, you know, I'm not a betting man, but I would say I would not put all of my money on a single stock in the stock market. I would want to diversify. And I think that's exactly the point here, is that now we have another potential technique. And, uh, and, and, and I, you know, I think it's best to have multiple techniques that we're, um, you know, putting resources into to try to bring these therapies to suffer patients as quickly as possible. Okay, Marcy, we don't have too much time, but what are the other options for creating stem cells then? 
Well, the ones that you've mentioned, uh, the IPS cells, there are stem cells uh, that are derived from IVF embryos, and there are stem cells that are derived from adult tissues. Most of these don't have the ethical and social justice challenges that research cloning does have. So if we're going to go down the road to research cloning, we have to put policy in place that would prevent some of the abuses, and we have to really think about what the expense of each of these techniques would be and whether any treatments that are developed would be widely accessible. Okay, we're going to have to leave it there. Marcy Donovsky, Jeffrey Karp, thanks for joining us. Thank you.